I think it's fair to say I've kept the spirit of positivity surrounding Starfield. I don't do it because I feel I have to, but because I genuinely enjoyed the game. Many people misinterpret that as me trying to be the glass half full guy when I'm just looking at it as it is, as I enjoyed that glass of water, if you will. And so I had fun with Starfield and I've never been afraid to say that, but I also had a lot of optimism for Starfield's future. You know, I've approached it like a live service product for better or for worse. That's how I've looked at it, but that's just committed to years of updates. And I know this may be a video that could eventually age like milk, but I have to talk about it as it is now as we approach the half year mark, which is crazy since Starfield's release. We just made a video last week talking about Starfield five months later, which many people in the comments were surprised going, what, really? And also many people playing games since Starfield have said that it feels like Starfield has aged considerably already, which is not a good sign. But other people's opinions aside, what I wanna talk about today is the sad state I found Starfield in. As someone who enjoys the game, mind you, I know this could easily get spun into a super negative piece, and don't get me wrong, it'll be critical, but I'm looking at it as a fan who wants to go back and enjoy new things, but that's this adding, and the pace at which updates are coming out, I think is fine. What's being added when you look at what was initially promised, which I'll bring up here. We've been reading all your feedback. We're gonna start launching these new features, new ways to travel, city maps. For those of you who love shipbuilding, we're gonna be expanding that with decoration options. New gameplay options is in the second paragraph. You'll be able to alter your difficulty. They talk about things like cargo capacity, carry capacity, ship damage, vendor credits, afflictions. They talk about survival mechanics. And in the bottom paragraph, they mention official mod support coming to Starfield with the launch of creations early next year. So I have to imagine that a lot of this stuff should be arriving soon, but when I saw the March update for Starfield, it was one of those moments where I went, what are we doing? Like, why? I hate to sound like that kind of gamer because many people know I don't approach my coverage that way, but truly I looked at the Starfield update, which we're gonna go through today, and then talk a little bit more about the aftermath, and I went, what are we doing and why is it taking so long? I think part of the reason I feel that way more so is when it was Bethesda Game Studios independently, I thought to myself, okay, it's just them. They are a smaller team compared to most AAA efforts. Therefore, things may move a little slower than we're typically used to. But the market has sped up since between Fallout 4 and Starfield, between Fallout 76 and Starfield, where people demand content sooner. And when you have Microsoft slash Xbox at your back and they put everyone in QA on Starfield and Starfield did have, whether it was critically received well or not, or fan reception was good or not, it did really well. The player base is there where I thought Bethesda was gonna hammer home updates quick. Now I'm willing to be forgiving of the 2023 window after launch, you know, patch the game up, right? Figure some things out, create a roadmap, create a plan, you look at the top of the year, they've had some pretty sizable patches. I mean, seriously, take a scroll through the list that you're seeing on screen here. There's a lot in these patches, and I'm not going to poo-poo any of that. But what I will say is what's going to draw more people back in or have people give the game a second chance is new features, especially addressing feedback. For me, seeing the millionth Starfield update with a laundry list of fixes you know what it reminds me of? And I wouldn't say this game was nearly as broken at launch, but it reminds me of Cyberpunk, where you just see this long, long list of quest fixes, art fixes, gameplay fixes, but no real new mechanics, if you will. And the reason I'm making this video now is, again, you go back to the promise that was made, which was, for example, at the top of the new year, beginning early next year. We're now in March. And we already have the March update, and it's going to be another six weeks or so until we get another Starfield update. And yes, you see that Creations is supposed to be launching then. And I think this is very much pivotal to the lifespan of Starfield. I'm not one of those doomers that I've seen videos on acting like Starfield's modding community is dead. There's a shit ton of mods already, and it's only going to grow more with the addition of the modding kit. We'll see how far things can go, but I strongly believe, like with every previous Bethesda Game Studios game, that the gaps will be filled once more by modders. So until there's real true reason to have extreme concern about that, I'm not doing on that front. But the one thing I would say is Bethesda, clock's ticking, you got modders that are kind of abandoning your project to go work on like older IP, Fallout, Elder Scrolls, and you need to draw them to your new product because they're gonna push you forward just like they've pushed you forward for Fallout, like they've pushed you forward for Elder Scrolls. Like, you kinda need to be on that. So I have to say, I thought the modding kit would be out by this point in time. 
it's disappointing to see that's not the case. But more than anything, you look at some of the features in this newest update. Photo mode, new expressions and poses on the player and companions in photo mode. Scanner, this is a solid one. You can open doors and harvest with the scanner open. So you don't gotta put it away, interact, but not like a real big deal, right? Other options here. Setting course on an inactive quest will now make it active. Added support for adjusting FOV when using third person ship view. Added a quality slider on PC, removed the digipick cost for using undo during the security minigame, added an autosave when fast traveling from planet's surface to orbit, it's crazy it actually wasn't in the game in the first place, and updated the ship UI to perform more smoothly at higher frame rates. Again, look, I, if this was Bethesda on their own, I'd be like, all right, fine, let them cook. But you look at some of these updates, Guys, like you have Xbox at your back. Like people were expecting a pretty big push after Starfield came out. I'm just leveling at this point, man. Like there was a much larger expectation for post-launch support. So the question is, what's going on? Where is it? When's it gonna happen? I don't think Bethesda's abandoned anything for what it's worth. And that's why I said this video could eventually age like milk. But what I will say is I believe if I were to wager a guess, what is the plan for Bethesda right now? I think modding will come out within the next month. It has to. It has to sooner rather than later. It's already pretty urgent. I think it's even more urgent when you get into the month of April. I do think Bethesda may be sitting on their bigger updates and additions. Why is that? I do think back to that wave of criticism that slammed them outside the release of Starfield, right? I mean, it wasn't just a couple of people. If you search Starfield on YouTube, I'm sure all you will find is extremely critical videos of the game. Any recommended Starfield video to me has not been positive, okay? And that's just the honest truth of the matter. People had a lot of hopes for Starfield, and in many cases on a critical level, it did not deliver to people. And even if I enjoyed it a lot, I get where people are coming from, and you need to address those people. So if you're Bethesda, do you piecemeal those updates? Do you gradually roll them out? Or do you wait when people are looking at your game again, and not just covering it on like a basis I may be doing, when people are looking at your game again and say, hey, a lot of this stuff has just been added to the game. What do I mean by that? We know Shattered Space is coming this year. At the end of year update for Starfield, they confirmed at the bottom of the blog post that Starfield is coming at the end of 2024. Okay, great. So you got to show that off sooner rather than later. I think it's a pretty safe bet since Xbox has already confirmed their summer showcase that Starfield's Shattered Space expansion will reveal itself here. What would be a good way to get people into the Starfield mood and say, hey, look at all the things we've done thus far. Tell them, hey, this big update, it dropped right now and it's free and it adds X, Y, and Z. Right now, again, you go back to this end of year update and they mention things like the city maps. They mention new features like new ways to travel, new gameplay options. And I don't know if all of this is gonna hit at once, right? This is kind of their plan for what I think is the year. So I don't think all of this is gonna hit at once. But what if a massive update hits Starfield around the timing of them announcing Shattered Space? You have that there, and now you have the attention and maybe a little more optimism building once more. Right now, does Bethesda truly stand to gain if they put out a couple of great free updates and people across Reddit, Twitter, maybe a video or two from me and other people still playing Starfield look at it and go like, hey, this is pretty good. Yeah, you might want to check it out. Or do you wait for the moment with the big pop? And if you're Bethesda, I think you can kind of win either way, but I think the latter has a bigger payoff if you start to address those real concerns, especially if the one thing we're not talking about, we're all going over free updates, is what does Shattered Space bring into the picture, right? What is that going to address, if anything at all? Because I feel like you have to have these smaller, free, incremental upgrades throughout the lifespan of the game year by year, but then the expansions have to bring new planets, new cities, new features, new mechanics, like they have to bring the big guns out. So what does Shattered Space bring out that maybe was missing from the base game is what I'm keen to see. And that's where I think things lie right now, but there's no denying that Starfield, I think in its current state, it's pretty sad, especially as we covered in our five months later video for Starfield. I look at Fallout 4 and how quickly its DLC came out. And yes, I'm not gonna have rose tinted glasses. I was complaining up the storm at how much workshop DLC Bethesda was doing. But we also got things like the Automatron DLC. We got Far Harbor. We got Nuka World. And that was in like, what, a, a five to six month span? It's almost been six months and Starfield has got nothing. It is 
definitely disappointing. I can be sympathetic and understanding to maybe after Starfield launched, the team took a break, got back into the swing of things, pushed out a couple of final updates for the year, but it's not even just me zeroing in on this single update. One of the last updates for the year for Starfield in 2023 was maybe like three or four bullet points long. It just felt like the team was scratching and clawing their way out of an arduous year and had to reset mentally, which again, I can sympathize with, but I am just reading from the outside, looking in, speculating pretty heavily here, pretty liberally here. But I will just say that I think these updates need to be more. As a fan of Starfield, I look at them and I'm even I'm not going back to that. I don't, I'll be real, like I don't give a shit about photo mode, man. Like what, why, what is, why is that a targeted feature right now? Why are you not targeting exploration? Why are you not targeting fun gameplay options? Why aren't you targeting survival mechanics? Like. Why is it little, I guess, bullshit features that are being targeted first? It, I get cleaning up bugs and fixes, like that should be as big a priority, of course, to make Starfield as polished as it can be, but why on a feature level are things like photo mode being targeted initially? Like save that for later when you're close to the release of Shattered Space. Like that's not, in my opinion, nearly as urgent. The scanner update, I, I can get behind, you know, that, that one is solid because that is something that was annoying, just putting things away, taking it out. So good quality of life there. But I think we are at the point where we should have seen at least, and I don't think I'm greedy for saying this, one decent new feature to the game that I'm talking is like that new way of exploring or that new survival mechanic or that new gameplay mode, like something new should have been ready by this point in time, in my opinion, if you've had over five months. Not that they haven't fixed things, but you get my point. You know, I think there should have been something at this point in the game's lifespan that goes, oh, okay, we're trending in a certain direction now. It still feels like we're in month one, month two with some of these updates. So let me know if I'm crazy down below. I I'm wondering if you share the same kind of irritation that I'm having right now with Starfield's updates. I do think if you want me to end this on a positive note, I do think this will get better. I do think there will be a time where Starfield will get up and running and will be rolling, but I got to do my job and talk about how things are right now. And right now it's just not good enough. If they get better in a year or two and this video ages poorly, great. That's exactly what we love to see. I need to look stupid, right? Come on, Bethesda, help me out here. All right, that's all I got for you today. Let me know what you're thinking of Starfield down below. With that, I'll catch you in the next video. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.